Hello, um, welcome to my live stream. My name is Suzanne Bryan, and today I have a very special guest, and that is Arenda Holiday. She is the executive director of the Knitting Guild Association, otherwise known as TKGA, and the editor of Cast On Magazine. And she's here to discuss a new certification program that TKGA has just started offering recently. It's very, very exciting. And some other things that are going on with TKGA. So I'm streaming this to four locations. It's going to, um, and I see people commenting already. Yay! <laughs> so um, this is going to my main page on Facebook. That's Suzanne Simpson Bryan. It's also going to my group on Facebook, which is called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. And then it's going to a YouTube channel that I have that's called Knitting with Suzanne and another YouTube channel that I have that's called Off the Cuff. So we've got four places and I'm seeing people um, coming from YouTube and Facebook with their uh, question, I mean, with their responses saying, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> So it's good, so good to see you all. Fun, fun, fun. So Sue M's on here, Demetria, Elizabeth Reich, Kurt Payne, and Kurt is in New Zealand, Margot, and Nancy Johnston. So here we're gonna, I'm gonna have Arinda come on now. You're going to see her in just a second. <laughs> there she is. And as we go along, what I'm going to do is if people have a specific question for Arenda or for me, I will drag their question across. For example, I'll just do a test one here. Nano and hi, Suzanne. So I'll post if it's a question for Arenda or for me, I'll just put it right on here. You can see that, right? Let me know if you can see that. And then you'll know which question Arenda is addressing and what she's talking about. And then when we move on to the next topic, I'll post that up there too. Okay, that's pretty cool, huh? So, first of all, I want to say that the, the Knitting Guild Association, which I'm from this point forward going to call TKGA, has uh, done the Master Hand Knitting Program since about 1985, Arenda? Is that when it started? Uh, I think 1987 was the first. 1987, the Master yeah. Hand Knitting Program started. And several hundred people have gone through the program. It's a totally amazing gift to yourself if you are so inclined. The Master Hand Knitting Program involves uh, knitting a lot of swatches to near perfection, um, doing a lot of research, answering questions, writing reports, and knitting um, samples. Uh, for example, as culminating projects, you design and knit and write a pattern for a traditional style sweater, and then you design, knit, and write the pattern for a tr traditional style hat, as well as writing two reports on traditional types of knitting and all that kind of stuff. Well, not everybody is interested in doing all that research and writing, but they want to finesse their knitting. They just want their knitting to look as good as possible. So Rinda and the rest of the uh, master's committee have developed a new program and it's called Professional Knitting Certification Course. Or you call it a program or a course? Uh, we're calling it a, well, it's, it's kind of in between. You're certified when you're finished, but unlike the master's program where you have to do all of the work on your own by yourself, uh -huh. you are assigned an instructor who is your mentor throughout the program. Oh, and wow. Yeah, so you can, you, well, don't call you them. You can communicate with them. Do yes, the work. ask as many questions as you want. You also get difference. a very thorough reference guide uh -huh. with everything that you need, unlike the master's program. So there's no outside research really involved. Um, you can, we provide links to people that have gone through the master's program, like your videos, for example, um, that if they have a question and they want to see how something's done, they can do that. But they don't, you don't need to get any outside work, uh, books, no real research involved, just reading, doing oh, the work. Don't know how to do the technique in question. Yes. And then you're going to have to Teachers. find out how to do it. But we provide resources for every single thing like that. Right now, before we go further, can everybody hear both of us okay? And um, the tempo is going okay for you? Let me know. Also, 
when you want to post when you're typing no matter which uh, output you're on I see your comments okay so they compile the program I'm using co puts them all together collates them and I can see all of your comments if you have a specific question that you would like to ask please type the word question in all caps at the beginning of your comment of your question that way it stands out over in the chat for me and I can see the question and I'll ask it of Arenda. okay so another thing Arenda, in the master handing program it's divided into three levels yeah. and this program is also divided into three. it has it has actually it's going to have three um, the reason why we did this we were going to put it in one program that you bought and because it's so extensive the cost would have been too high and the handout would have been a million pages long so we decided it would have been a book i'm currently working on the second part of it now which uh goes into finishing and the reference section is gigantic because we go into every possible thing a finisher would need know need to know how to do okay so the reference is really good I have a good question for you here. I'm going to post it. The question is, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. It's from Demetria. She says, for Arenda, can I change to the new program if I signed up but haven't submitted level one yet of the master marketing program? For accounting reasons, yes, you can if you've purchased level one within six months. Because of the way our accounting system is done, that we that was as far back as we could do it. We've had people that bought level one in, uh, I think the best one was 1996. And no, we for accounting reasons, we cannot do that. It's just not going to happen. But if you haven't, if it's been six months from um, when it was released, which was September 26th, you can do it. What we do is we refund your money and then you purchase the uh, professional knitting rather than switching it over that would be an yep. accounting nightmare yeah yeah it everything everything depends on accounting i've learned yes so um now tkga recently reorganized right yes in october in november of 2016 the management company that owned us uh disbanded mm -hmm. and what happened was uh several people on the master hand knitting committee we just felt terrible because there were these people that had purchased the master's program or were midway through it. And uh, the management company was just going to not even bother to tell them. They were just going to disappear. And so we took it over, converted it into a nonprofit. We were very lucky to have uh, one of the people that was involved uh, runs a large nonprofit in Dallas. And so she got us access to attorneys for no, no charge. Um, someone who developed our computer system, but let us have six months to pay. So it worked out very well, and we're very healthy now. I don't want anybody to worry about it. We're not going to. So anywhere. right now, there are no paid employees. Well, yes, we have started paying people for things that if the volunteers who are doing them suddenly drop dead and you had to hire somebody to do it. A are, professional. Pay, yeah. Right. We pay the person that does our registration. We pay our accountant. I am paid for doing cast on, mm -hmm. but because that is a massive, massive effort, I will tell you. And um, I think that's it. But all of the people volunteers, yeah. just like the master hand in yeah. it was always volunteers. Yes. Okay. Now, volunteers. what are the dues to belong to TKGA? Uh, 25 a year. $25 a year. And yeah. it's well worth it, now a lot of people get confused a lot of times they have a local guild in their neighborhood and they'll think that once they join their guild well, they belong to your yeah also but no, they've got that's no. two separate we things. have guild they're two separate things there are affiliated guilds that um that pay to be an affiliated guild and i think that's like 25 dollars a year as well and there are things that they can access out on um on our website just for them but you can be in a guild and it could not be affiliated with tkga right um so they are two separate things yeah what so they get pay your membership do this for your local guild and you need to pay your yeah. 25 dollars guilds to belong to tkga and all of the past on your way to the masters 
and oh, everything articles are all available and indexed yeah and that and, is, that is yeah. so worth it right there for the 25 dollars. <laughs> just if you had just access to that it's worth far more than $25. Yeah, I put that together a couple of issues ago and it, you know, it was a lot of work to do, but when you have all of that information that we've been putting together for years that you really can't find anywhere else. Uh, another reason why we decided to put this course together, not just for people who don't want to do the masters is it is a service to the industry. Um, our standards are above and beyond the industry standards. And all it takes is flipping through a magazine and looking at some of the samples that have been knit. And I've talked with yarn companies and they feel frustrated when they hire sample knitters that don't, well, that they think they're a good knitter and they're not. Well, they received the sample. Okay, here's right. another question. This is from Margo. She says, would one still need to design a garment for the no. No, not at all. Uh, you could go through this course and you would have such an understanding of gauge and different stitch patterns that you could design if you wanted to. Uh, because really, as you know, that's what design is. It's gauge and stitch patterns for the most part. But it is not a requirement, nor is there any pattern writing. Everything that you uh, do in the course is your it's spelled out exactly and in fact that's one of the things that you're graded on is how well you can follow a pattern because following directions okay right here's another question this is from kurt he's in new zealand he says uh who are the mentors for the program and how do you become one well right now the mentors for the program there are five of us and they are all um have been co-chairs of the master hand knitting committee because they have a wide experience in looking at work. And in order to mentor someone or to tell what, what someone's doing wrong, you have to be able to figure that out, as you know, because when you were a co-chair, that's when you really learn how to knit. You have so, to mentally deconstruct something right, yeah. without taking it apart. You cannot take their knitting apart. There are a lot of good knitters who don't know, I mean, I, you could, show them a mistake and they're not going to be able to find it. And uh, that is one of the things that we've got in the handout as well that's pretty good. It's a problem solving section where I have knit a whole bunch of stuff that has problems. <laughs> it <laughs> Which was is, really good. That, it was fun. And you was, can go through there. Yes. Okay, here's another question. This is from uh, Deborah. She says, Arinda, can you give advantages of both programs, the master hand knitting versus the uh, professional uh, knitting certification? Well, there really isn't anything like the master hand knitting program. There, there are only, I think, 348 master knitters since 1987. So that's a good idea of how comprehensive that program is. And two of them are right here. You yes. Are, <laughs> yes. And if you are the kind of person who wants to know the why and you don't mind research and you do want to design. And I like to say that master knitters often, you know, the um, expression, you can't see the forest for the trees. Master knitters can't see the tree for the leaves. Uh, that <laughs> is a quality that they have. Not everybody wants to work at that depth. Right. And so the professional knitting program is it covers all of the same topics, but not in the same depth. Your mentors are not going to be looking at each swatch with a magnifying glass. They're going to look at it and stand back and go, how would this look in a magazine? Right. Is this good enough for magazine, uh, for a professional knitter? Is it finished to that level? Where in the master's program, you have to be able to teach that and know the why and the where and then recite how to do it back to someone else. Right, in a way they Which, understand it. That's so not the, the professional knitting uh -huh. course is yeah. also for people who like want to do finishing and stuff too though, like for yarn stores and stuff, right? Yeah, the, yes, finishing is a large part of this because you know, as the editor of Cast On, I was just whining to Suzanne about this earlier, is um, you get garments that have been knit by sample knitters and they don't know how to finish. They do not know how to finish, they, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of astounded uh, by some of the garments that I get back. And this course would prepare you to be a finisher for a yarn store or to uh, what I like to tell people is you could walk around and show your shoulder seams. Go, look at this. Isn't this magnificent? Look at the pickups around here. 
um, you could be very proud of your work and know that it's as good as it can possibly be, which uh, I just can't tell you how pathetic some finishing is on things. It's very hard. The real difference, I think, in my opinion, and I don't know, I'm not as familiar with the course as you are, but is that the Master Hand Knitting pe- uh, Program is for people who want to really dive deep, deep, yes. deep, deep. The professional knitting course are people that want to their knitting to be as good as they can get it to be. Yes, now, yes. Whereas the Master Hand Knitting, you're not just a master of finessing your knitting, but you know about knitting. You know it, you can teach it, you could write about it. You know you the history. Design, you know research. the history. Right. And I was telling a- I was telling somebody, um, because I was a physician's assistant before I retired, and, and I'm your husband's probably the same way. I constantly was reading journals and magazines. Yeah. I researched all the time to stay up with my profession. Yes. And that's how I looked at the Master Hand Knitting Program because I'm very familiar with research and the research to me was fun because I was researching something that I loved rather than researching something that I had to research. So yeah. it just depends on your outlook. Now, there, here's another question here. This is from Laura. She says, how do I sign up? Well, you have to be a member of TKGA. And if you go to tkga.org and become a member, it's listed under the certification uh, tab. And you can sign up. You'll be assigned an instructor and download the materials immediately. Okay, and- here's another question from <laughs> Elizabeth Reich. She says, Celia, uh, Celia McAdam is a friend of hers and lives near her. Could she be uh, Elizabeth's mentor? No, Celia's got way too much to do. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. We keep Celia really busy. Uh, and no, it's better if you don't have a friend. Friends often can't tell you <laughs> that you are making mistakes. It's a uh, nice to have someone that doesn't know you, don't know where you're from, look at your work because they're not, factoring in, am I going to hurt their feelings if I tell them that they could it make can be mistake. impartial? They can yeah, object. but you can certainly show your work to Celia. Right. Uh, and knowing okay. Celia should probably give you an honest opinion. Here's another question. This is from Kimmy Knott. I'm in the UK. I am a beginner advanced knitter and I'm disabled. Can I do this course? Uh, yes. Beginner. Well, like with all of our courses, you can you don't have to know everything when you start because you'll be guided through uh depending on um uh, and being in europe or being anywhere else doesn't matter because it's all online and uh we, we do have a slightly higher fee for non-us because we have to ship the box shipping mm-hmm. yeah it's just shipping and nothing else so you know a lot of people this is this is the the beauty of both of these courses if you're doing either one of these courses, you actually send your work in segments, like the master yeah. is in three segments. And this, this new course is going to also be in three segments. You send a box with all your knitting and stuff in it to the reviewer, and they actually look at your knitting real in person and they can pull on it and, and examine it. And yeah. then they can give you advice on how to improve it. And, our That's hands, invaluable. Yeah, and it's not criticism. Uh, no, we not. don't criticize. We don't have instructors or committee members who have a gotcha kind of attitude towards looking. Everything is very positive because we've been there. Well, Everyone, it's, just, it's just like you and I. My whole objective is to help people love their knitting more. Yes. Well, and to be able to, I mean, and one of the reasons why we wanted this course is for people who want to gift something to someone and know that it is the best possible thing. I remember the first time I knit a hat for someone and it came with directions. Okay, you need to wear it this way so that the seam (laughs) is in the back. You don't need to write directions for your gifts. You can just give it and stand back. Or the um, you're the person at the baby shower that when your present is opened, everyone stands up and applauds. Yes. That's what that's that's what you Okay, here's another question from Kimmy Not again. How much is the complete course? The complete course, each module is $150. And that is pricey, we know, but we do, we are paying our instructors because for the master's reviewers, they're not paid, they're volunteers. But you can't contact your reviewers in the master's program. 
we wanted our students to feel like you can send me 10 emails a day and I'm going to answer them. That's part of the whole process of being a mentor. Uh, it includes a complete reference guide that you'll have forever with pretty much everything in it and um, a, a mentor. And when you're finished, you'll have a certificate that says that you are a professional knitter. You'll also, for those people that want to work as sample knitters, finishers or test knitters, you'll have a letter of recommendation from the instructor that lists point by point what you know. This is from Susan McBride. She says, as a librarian, let me say the index is amazing. And this is from Nancy Creedmore. You may be, you may know. Oh, yeah. The index is terrific. Thank you, Arenda. It was hard work. <laughs> yeah. And this is from uh, Vera Van Slyke. She says, is there a reason other than the accounting that the Guild does not send out membership renewal notification? Just wondering. We do. But we send them out. But a lot of people's um, uh, email systems or browsers put it in spam. And uh, I just so, got mine the other day. So yes, yeah. go out. Yeah, it does. Once you unsub or if you unsubscribe uh, by law or by our mail company, that you cannot send anything to them ever, ever, ever again unless they resubscribe. So what will happen is that somebody hits unsubscribe, they don't get it, or it goes to their spam folder. Okay, here's another one. What is the time frame to finish each level? For the professional knitter program, because we are having people go through it who want to be sample knitters or test knitters, and a part of that is that you have to work to a deadline. The time. Okay. Um, I mean, it's you have to learn how to do that. So. You have to complete a module within a calendar year of start of when you've ordered it. And that's completely possible. Uh, Carolyn Vance, who um, uh, is editing it and doing all of the sample knitting for it, she did it all in about a week and a half. Now, she is a master knitter, but it is possible. Uh, once you have completed a level, we want you to order the new module within six months. Now, of course, we're gonna, if you have a death in the family or something, of course, we'll, we'll readjust that. But we want to encourage people to do this in a timely fashion because that is part of what being a professional knitter is about. Now, maybe your interest in professional knitting is getting something done in time for a church bazaar or to get a baby present finished before the kid graduates from college. <laughs> Working to a deadline and learning how to evaluate how long it takes you to do something is a useful skill for any knitter. Okay. Arenda, this is from Hat Lover 67 Would you also talk about the mini courses offered through TKGA? We have a lot of mini courses, and they are very uh, simple uh, one module, maybe five swatches to knit. And you could go online and look at the topics that we have, but we have ones for different cast-ons and bind-offs, different finishing techniques, a uh, couple of ones on lace. It's really quite a comprehensive list. But, um, you know, I'm not familiar with all of them because I don't have them right here in front of me. But you uh, order it, you send in your swatches, you get a letter, and you have an instructor, so you have someone to ask questions about. And the cost is generally around $25, I think. Yeah, those are good for small individuals. Yeah. Okay, this is from Beth Zimmerman. This is a question for me. She said she was looking forward to the boot camp. Is one of these programs a better choice? The boot camp course is something that I'm teaching. I don't have it out yet. I teach it live in person, and it's how to knit. So... It actually would be something really, really good if you're a beginning knitter or you feel rusty on your knitting skills to do before you do the professional knitting course. It's not yes. duplicating. They're not duplicating. It's a completely different course. And it's how to knit and how to finesse your knitting and you know how to do increases and decreases and yarn overs and, and all that kind of stuff. So there, it's not a conflict and it's not a, and, yeah. a little bit of and, overlap, but I think... Yeah, and the, our program isn't so much can you do something, it's if you can do it well. So we take it to the next level. And a exactly. big component of the professional knitting course is something else that I've noticed that a lot of knitters have trouble with. One of the things that is a key focus to it that is not really discussed in the master's program much is knitting to gauge. Yes. And 
you know, in the master's program, you just kind of knit because you're going to be a designer. You knit a few things to gauge, but for the most part, you just knit it. And that's the way it is in this. Everything is knit to a specific gauge and every knitter who wants to use a pattern would really benefit from that. Right. Um, that is a huge focus of it. Okay, this is from Deborah. She says, do you recommend taking basics, basics, basics course before the master hand knitting course? Well, since I'm the instructor of it, it is a little self-serving for me to say, yes, it's a requirement. If you don't take it, you'll fail. <laughs> um, uh, what it, the purpose of it is, is that it kind of is a way, if you're a little nervous about having your work evaluated by a total stranger and you're not sure of things like, do I know basic techniques correct? It's a way to kind of um, tiptoe into, into that world. And I think, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you honestly, the students that I've had that do the master, that do the master's program generally do better because they're not as intimidated. They know they've straightened out their tension issues and their blocking issues before they start. So they have a bit of a heads up, but it is not a requirement by any stretch of the imagination. We would never do that. And, you know, there's different different people and they have different uh, insecurities and stuff. So oh. um, I just jumped into the master hand knitting program because I really didn't have a fear of somebody evaluating my knitting. Yeah, I had no idea what to expect, but I, I was looking forward to it. Um, the other people are fearful of someone looking at their knitting. So basics, basics, basics is a really good way for them to get over that and find out that you're not there to criticize them. You're there to... No to build them up and no. a better. And also in the masters, you send in your entire portfolio. And so <laughs> if you're once. doing something wrong, like I, I once reviewed someone who twisted every stitch. Right, if you get off. That's that a way to find that out. It's pretty bad. And it'd been better if they'd taken the basics class where they only were working five, sti five swatches to right. find that out before they did the entire program. Before you go forward. This is from Margot. She says, what level do you recommend a person attain prior to signing up for either of the master hand knitting or the professional knitting? That really depends. Uh, we recently put something on our website that I did for the professional knitting course, and we're calling it prerequisites. And to do either, you really don't have to know how to do increases or decreases or anything. You can research that as you go along. But what you have to have is you have to have even tension. And that is something that it's the bugaboo of so many of us. But if you've mastered that, if you know how to block, if you know how to weave in yarn tails, it's a huge step up. And then you can learn from there. But if you're trying to fix those things at the same time, you're trying to show that you can do an SSK uh, satisfactorily. It's hard and it's frustrating. So we did add that. It's not an official prerequisite, but it's a way for people to look at that and go, okay, I don't know how to do that. Maybe I ought to look at Suzanne's uh, blog entries on even tension, which I recommend to all of my basic students. <laughs> like, you want to look at this <laughs> before you do anything else. Okay, this, because is, this is from Anne. She says, if I choose to switch to the professional certification course, what exactly do I need to do? Or are the assignments similar? I'm excited to no knitting no they're different and i didn't want people who decided to do the masters we've had a master knitter sign up for it uh because uh gauge is so much more important in this all of the exercises are different you do some of the same things but um but you're not going to be knitting the same swatches because that would have been kind of cheating i actually wrote all of the patterns and they're all very different but, you know, there's only so many increases and so many decreases that you have. And we want to know that you can do those. So there are going to be swatches that, inter that include those. But there are also going to be swatches that include those where that's not the main focus of that right. swatch. Right, right. So, and for, for the biggest difference in level two is finishing is stressed. But in the professional knitting, you knit two sample sweaters that are small. And you use different techniques on shoulders. You do different sleeve techniques on the same sweater. 
so that this is a, a way that we can test that you can do this practically rather than just do a bunch of swatches. A sampler. The sampler. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a sampler sweater. Nobody will ever be able to so wear that it. Really, the two programs are very actually quite different. So you could probably yes. benefit from both of them. It would just be yeah. depending on which one you want to do first, you know, because in the master yeah. hitting program, like you learn how to do, you know, joining at the shoulder, but you don't show you don't show the execution of it in a garment. Well, and that's what I found when I was reviewing is that uh, people could do the swatches perfectly. And then you'd look at their sweater and go, what the hell happened? It didn't apply I mean, it. Right. It didn't apply it. And for a, pro a professional knitter, you have to be able to apply it. Right. Okay. So um, this is from Antoinette. She says, what level of knitting would one be at to get the most out of the master class? Uh, you have good tension, <laughs> you know how to block and weave in yarn tails, and you've done some projects. Um, you know, it'd be helpful if you had done projects other than socks, hats, scarves, and cowls, knit at least one sweater, because for a lot of projects, gauge isn't so important, and you can be off, and the thing will still fit, particularly scarves and shawls. Um if you have knit something and have worked towards getting something to gauge, I think it would probably be better because that is that is very key. Okay, this is from Margaret in Chile. I want to go to Chile and visit. I haven't been. <laughs> it looks pretty interesting. I want to do the master hand knitting, but don't have time for the research right now. I'd still like to improve my knitting. Would it make sense to do the professional knitting course now and the master hand knitting course later? Well, what you can do, because in the master's program, another difference is uh, there is no time limit on the master's program. You can order it and do the knitting uh, and, you know, enough research to do the knitting, but not the reports. The only thing is if you don't complete it within, I think it's 18 months, the first module or the first level, you have to pay a re-registration fee of $8, which that's nothing really in the scheme of things if you're going to take it. We have people that have instructions from 1996 <laughs> and not kidding. And uh, it's changed they, a little since then. Don't oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. So, but you just re-register. With the professional knitting, if you're on a, if you don't have the time to devote to it within a year, I would not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it because uh, you'd have to buy the whole thing over again, which I feel bad about. But again, time is a consideration in this course where it's not in the master's. Um, I found when I was doing the master hand knitting program, um, I was working full time in an urgent care and, um, but when I got home from work, that's all I worked on. Yeah. And I didn't do any other knitting during that time. I did buy a lot of yarn, though. Yeah. <laughs> My stash grew exponentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't do any other knitting. I focused entirely on that because I found that if I strayed away and started doing something else, when I came back, I'd have to take two steps back yeah. to figure out where I left off. Now, this, this next question sort of uh, goes with that. This is from Demetria. She says, I'm finding the first swatches I made for level one have imperfections. Do I need to start again or is showing progress good enough? Uh, you want to show your best work. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you want to show in, turn in your best work. One of the things that reviewers find, and Suzanne can tell you this, is the submissions that come in, and I'm not saying you're doing this, Demetria. I'm saying that people have done it, is that they just go ahead and knit all of the swatches, don't do any of the research, and they want to have their reviewer do all of their research for them and tell them what they're doing wrong. And that is really kind of defeating the purpose. It's a self-study program and you want to submit your best work. Now, uh, if you want to send in some, this was my first pass and look where I'm at now, we'd love to see that. You're right. You should, exactly. you should be sending in your best work. It's very frustrating. Remember the master's committee people are volunteers. And it can take for a level one anywhere from 10 to 20 hours to review it. And these are people that have real jobs yeah. uh, that would like to be knitting on their own. And so it, as a courtesy to them, if you send in your best work, it, they will appreciate it very much. And so in the math, Do you agree, Suzanne? <laughs> level one, if it's still the same, level one is reviewed by a uh, 
committee member, and then it's yes. also reviewed by a co-chair. So co -chair. people would be spending yeah. 12 to 20, 20 hours yeah. on that box. And for level two, three people are looking at it, and level three, four people are looking at it. But by the yeah, time so you're looking at a lot of hours. Three, they've got the hang of of what to expect. So it's 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 still as a reviewer. I know I spent many, 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 oh, many, yeah. many hours looking at people. And I got to tell you, the, the letters that I loved writing the most were the ones that were, I have no comments. <laughs> that didn't happen very often. There is nothing I can say. You are perfect. <laughs> this is you are beautiful. The best thing. <laughs> this is great. Those were fun. Okay. It's, it's very disheartening when you have to write a letter where you have to write paragraph after paragraph on every swatch. And it, it's demoralizing to the person who receives it. And it's very sad for the reviewer. It's not, it's not a, oh gosh, look what I can find wrong. Right. It's really, yeah. yeah. This is from Kurt Payne. He says, what are the yarn requirements for the new course? Well, for the new course. He's from we, New Zealand. Yes. Um, you have to have four weights of yarn. We don't specify that you use a specific yarn. You have to have a medium, light, uh, super fine, fine, and I think one lace weight, because we want you to work across the spectrum, of, but not bulky, that's too heavy to ship around. We partnered with Knit Picks um, because we selected them because they have a wide range of yarn, it's priced at a good price point, and they ship around the world. And so what we're finding is that a lot of the students are just going through and, you know, we list specifically for each swatch. You need uh, wool of the Andes worsted. And uh, so a lot of people have done that. But that's not a requirement at all. It's not a requirement. You we need would never yarn or an equivalent. Equivalent. You have to be able to knit to gauge. And a lot of the people who want to take the course are people that are interested in test knitting so that they can test knit for their favorite designers. And test knitting, unlike sample knitting, you provide your own yarn and you may be using a completely different yarn, but you have to be able to knit to gauge if you want to be useful to the, the designer. So that's why we're focusing so much on knitting to gauge. So if you can get a different gauge, that's fine. Very I mean, if you can get the same gauge. The lady that was asking about the renewal, she said, I didn't think to check my spam. I missed my renewal date this year. So it was yeah. in spam. So, yep. okay. And this is just a comment from Martha. She says, I've taken the basics, basics, basics and learned a lot from it. And I've been knitting for 50 years. This is from- Oh yeah, all of us self-taught This knitters. is from Fatima. Fatima lives in Portugal. She says, if we do not revalidate on time our annual fee, what happens if we lose the notification? Oh, nothing. You just, re you, you just renew it um, the, again. And the one thing is that if you renew and your membership has lapsed, it requires a bit of tweaking by um, our office person to renew it. So there might be a slight delay. If you renew before it uh, expires, then you're... Makes life easier. Yeah. yeah, well, and it doesn't even make it easier. It just makes it quicker for you. This is from Kathleen. Um, and she says, can you discuss boot camp versus basics, basics, basics? And I'll answer this one. The basics, basics, basics is uh, geared towards setting you up to take the master hand knitting program. And it would probably gear you up pretty good for taking the professional knitting course too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's just basically teaching you or letting you find out what it's like to have someone review your knitting. Yeah. And learning the basic skills. Yeah. My boot camp course is an intense um, course for fine tuning and um, perfecting your knitting, starting with very beginning knitting. I've had a lot of people take it as um, the Martha said, who've been knitting for 50 years, because a lot of people learn how to knit at home. Either their mother, mother taught them or their grandmother or family friend, or maybe they taught themselves like I did just out of magazines and books, but they really have never had anybody to formally teach them. My Knitting Boot Camp is a formal teaching program of how to knit, starting with casting on, how to make a knit stitch, what's the anatomy of the knit stitch, how to make a purl stitch, 
you know, and it's, so it's really more about learning the architecture of the knitting because I think that's the foundation because you can't really do gauge and those other things if you don't understand how the stitches are created and what is their function and what are they doing. So the knitting boot camp is, is really very, very different from the basics, basics, basics. They're not, it's not an overlap. And yeah, in the basic class, they assume you can knit. Right. If, you, if any, uh, even with a lot of experience, people get a lot from it. Okay. Let's see. Let me look for some more questions. This is from Margo. She says, for Suzanne, do you think I can do the provisional course? Yes, Margo, you could do it. You could do it. Go for it. This is from Vera again. I signed up for basics, basics, basics this January, but have yet to send in my lesson. I think I'm ready now. Am I too late for the party? No, gosh, no. <laughs> I For my basics class, I absolutely uh, do not have any kind of deadline on it at all. In fact, I have people from 2008 that will send in their work. I just, I just don't want to deal with, to tell you the truth, excuses. So just send me, just send me an email. I'm ready whenever people are. Yeah. Arenda is, you know, as I always say, you know, she is um, so willing to share her love of knitting with everybody. So she doesn't really have those restrictions. And since she's the instructor for basics, 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 you know, she can, she can bend the rules for you. And she does that a lot. This is from Judith. She says, I want to improve my knitting. Which program would be my best choice, the basics classes or the professional knitting program? It kind of depends on where you're at and how confident you are. Um, the professional knitting course is going to jump right in. You're going to be doing cables and lace in the first couple of swatches. If you're not comfortable with that, the basics course is it's going to take you through maybe the first fourth of the first module of the master hand knitting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one's a good question. And this is from metaphor yarns. I signed up for the craft yarn council teaching certification course. How would the professional knitting of TKGA fit in for both of these? I'm not really familiar with their teaching. I know that we have a teacher certification and program ourselves, and it's much more in depth than theirs. Um, the, if you wanted to be a teacher, I don't know that the professional knitting course would be the thing. It really is just testing your ability to knit and or to follow. The, you're action. talking about the craft yarn council one or the, no, I'm talking about mine, the professional okay. knitting. Okay. No, our, our instructor program is, Oh, it's very complex. I don't want to take it. It's too yeah. much work. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, um, because I've done a lot of teaching after finishing the master hand knitting program, and I feel that it prepared me well for teaching. But then I'm one of those people that I jumped in with both feet. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I just, I dove, <laughs> I just belly we flopped. Have, in. We have a lot of master knitters who teach and, you know, they're, they're great teachers. Um, but, you know, I, when I teach, I just want to know everything I can possibly know on the subject. I don't want to be blindsided by right. a question that I don't know the answer to. And yeah, by we, doing the master's program, in a class. <laughs> yeah, uh, you generally know more than anyone else. And what we found is when we have master knitters go to conferences, uh, the minute that the teacher finds out they're in the class, they want to kick them out. <laughs> Because they often know more. I've had teachers ask me, Suzanne, why are you in this class? <laughs> yeah, why are you here? Just to make me feel bad. Um, okay, this is from, this is this is so fun. This is from a high school friend of mine that I haven't seen since high school. Her name's oh. Mary. She said, Suzanne, I just love to see you and hear you again. That's so fun. <laughs> Our 50-year reunions this year. Okay. Oh now, let me see. So this is from Fatima. The, she lives in Portugal. She says, thank you both for the information today. I'm so excited to get back to my box for the level one. This is good. from Deborah Cassidy. She said, if I want both courses, would it be better to take professional dating first? Uh, you know, I think it might be. Uh, it would be a good way to get your knitting skills at up to definitely you would have an easier time doing the master's program because you could focus on research. Yeah. And a lot of the 
you know, one of the things that drives people crazy when they do the master's program is that they have to find sources for all of the uh, work that they do. For every swatch, you have to have sources. And we give you all of that in this course. So it would definitely be easier to do. It gives you a starting point. And that reminds me that something I want to say earlier. All of the articles in Cast On Magazine, the teaching articles, like the On Your Way to the Masters and the yeah. Anatomy articles, and then the Garment Construction articles, most writers list their references oh, yeah. the article. And you yeah. will not find that in most other knitting. Uh, no, because they're not using. Right. They're, they're just not talking off the top of their They're head. talking about how they so do things. When, um, when, and I wrote a lot of articles for Cast On, and I always documented all of my references. And I oh, always yeah. use the references in the articles that I read because one will lead you to another. Yeah. And it gives you a, a wonderful way to get outside of your little narrow box of research. It gets you expanding out. Okay. This is uh, the Judith Long. She wants to know when I'm going to start my boot camp. And it, you know, I wanted to start this summer, but I had that major depression thing going on, kind of slowed me down. So I'm going to work on it real soon. And if you're in my Ravelry group or on my Facebook group, I'll be posting it there. So if you're not in those groups, join one or the other. Knitting with Well, I got to say, that would be an excellent preparation for any of our, our um, programs. Okay, then Martha says TKGA is doing conferences again. We are we are dipping our toes. Uh, for the past two years, we have been part of the um, DFW Fiber Festival, which I got to tell you, Dallas it, Fort Worth. Yes, Dallas. it is wonderful. And you've been uh, doing a, Master's Day there, right? Yes. It's a nonprofit organization, which is why we decided to uh, go with them rather than other other courses, other, you know, fiber festivals that go on. And they, I, they get fabulous teachers, but their market is exceptional. There's no dreck in their market. Um, I've found some of the best yarn I've ever seen there. Um, it's just wonderful. And then we are planning to have a conference in Portland, Oregon in November of 2020. And it's um, more details will be coming out later. We're just now putting out um, uh, calls for the instructors that we're going to have, but it's going to be a small retreat, not a big conference. Uh, there are so many big conferences out there uh, like with Vogue and Stitches we are a small organization. We really can't compete. We do not want to compete with them because they are for-profit organizations. And that is a big difference. So our things are always going to be smaller and more intimate. And there's a place for that. And Portland's such a nice place. Yeah. It's at a, it's at a great hotel downtown, really close to uh, Voodoo Donuts. <laughs> so, And I'm going to teach there. Yay! <laughs> okay, so... Um, how do I switch from, Andy says, how do I switch from master hand knitting to the professional? So they could basically just contact TKGA and tell yeah. them what they want. And we could look up your, yeah, right. we can look up your record. And this is, this is just for fun. Amber Shiwi, she says 5,000 house points for Margot. Margot is my administrator in my Facebook mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Gives people bonus points, house points. So uh, <laughs> they love that. So Amber's giving them to Margot. Okay. Um, Athela says, oh, this is Arenda. I've learned so much from you on Ravelry. Oh, Yay! thank you. Yeah, now you can <laughs> see what Arenda looks like. Yes, okay, so Jane Hart, is the basics class offered online? No, it's a correspondence course. Um, you, I want to see your swatches. I want to hold them in my hand and look at them to tell you what to do, you know, how you can improve them. So we do correspondence courses. You complete a lesson, you send them to me, and I review them the day I get them and get them back to you. Yeah. So, Okay, this is from Antoinette Makoko. Question, I'm a left-handed knitter. Would that affect reviewing my increase and decrease stitches? Our requirements are that you have to work them to industry standards. And all patterns are written that even if you're, there's left-handed and then there's left-handed. Some people um, knit from the left to right. Um, you 
you have to figure out how to make your decreases and increases look like they were knit the other way. And we've had a lot of people do it. I'm not left-handed, so it's always a mistake. You shouldn't be able to tell by looking at the swatch. We don't care how you knit. Right-handed, left-handed, continental throwing, the swatch yeah. should look the same. Yeah, we don't. We really don't know how you knit. We really don't care how you knit. Right. Uh, we just are looking at the finished work. Right. Okay, so this is from Sean. Sean says, question, um, a long question. For basics, 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 what is the best method of approach to complete the lessons? For some reason, I thought it would simply state, do this, then do this swatch, then do this, and then do this swatch. It seems much more fluid than that, so a bit hard to know where to begin. Um, the best way to, uh, to approach it, I think, is to just knit the swatches. For the first lesson, I'm just happy there are patterns provided for the first five swatches. Just knit them, follow the instructions, send them in, and that's going to give me a baseline of things that you need to work on. Uh, I'm not all that picky when it, it comes to the first lesson. As time goes on and we've figured out whether you have tension issues or blocking issues, then we can go from there. But uh, if you have any question about something specifically, just email me and I'm happy to answer it. And or you, send me a photo. Contact Arinda through the TKGA group on Ravelry as well. Yeah. Uh, she'll answer your questions there too. So this is Pamela Matthews. Um, you, uh, Pamela is a longtime TKG person. Mm -hmm. Is TKG planning to be at the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Fest yes. 2020? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. We're um, going to be there. Uh, we haven't signed, I don't know that we've signed the contract yet, but we're working on it. Yeah. Well, yes, we have signed a contract because we've decided who's teaching there. And, and you'll have a master's day. Yes, we're having a master's day. I have to tell you for people doing the Master Hand Knitting program, if at all possible, if you can make it to Master's Day, it's worth so much to you. You will get so much out of it. It's fantastic time. Um, this is from Dolise Beeman. Is Arinda's BBB accessed through the TKGA website? Yes, yes. You have to be a member to order any of our classes. Uh, that is how, um, because of our tax structure as a nonprofit, memberships allow us to sell you things and uh, that if we sold them without you being a member, it would complicate our tax structure to it. Right. That's one of the things I have to figure out on selling my um, knitting boot camp is how I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, this is from Judith Long. She says, Arinda, I just want to say how much your videos have helped me. <laughs> well, they do not have the production quality that Suzanne's do. <laughs> they always look like I'm making them in my bathroom. <laughs> well, but they're free. <laughs> There's that. Right. This is from Sean. Question, is the Master Hand Knitting mostly geared towards those hoping to become designers and professional knitters program and the professional knitters program for those who would like to be test knitters? Um, well, it is the primary function of it is to prepare you to do those things, the professional knitting one, to be a sample, a test knitter, or a finisher. But you may want to have those skills just for your own knitting, which I think most people do. In the master's program, uh, no, you don't have to want to be a designer. And But if you do want to be a designer, you're going to have all of the skills that you need in order to do that, except for the creativity. We have a lot of master knitters who simply panic at the thought of designing something. And they've designed exactly one sweater and one hat. Uh, <laughs> And that's it. They, they have no interest in design. They would have probably been better off in the other program. But you have no idea. Like when I went into it, I just wanted to, I knew that in, you know, 10 years or so from that time, I was going to retire. And so I was thinking, I'm a type A personality and what am I going to do in retirement? I thought, well, I'm going to focus on my hobby. So that's why I did the Master Hand Inning program. I had no intention of teaching or oh, writing yeah. articles or designing anything. I just wanted to invest more energy and time in learning about my hobby. Well, all these things happened. Yeah, uh, just kind uh, of, yeah. They just happened and I enjoy all of it. But if going back to the beginning, I did not foresee any of this happening. No, when I went through the master's program, I just wanted to be able to give a gift to someone. I knit a lot for other people as gifts, and I wanted to give them something that I would not have to give them instructions for. Right. That was my only goal. Okay. And I'm
And Heather Stort is on here, and she said, Dallas Fort Worth is amazing. It's been a great venue for holding Masters Day. This is from Lorraine. Yeah. She says, Suzanne, are you going to do another sweater knit along? And yes, I am. And it's going to start in November, but we're not going to actually start knitting on the sweater until after Christmas. But in November, we can start picking our yarn, swatching, doing body measurements and stuff like that. And it's going to be bottom up um, and in pieces with seaming. So, oh, so thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can do a pullover or a cardigan and it'll have two different necklines for the cardigan and you'll be able to do whatever stitch patterns you want to do so it's very open your own yarn your own needles your gauge so let's see okay so jennifer fox this is a good one and i'll, I'll talk about this i live in georgia and looked up a chap a guild chapter close to me in north georgia and there were none i wonder why more knit guilds do not become a guild First of all, not all guilds register with the Knitting Guild Association, with TKGA. So there yeah. may be a guild in your area that you just don't know about. And they don't advertise, you know, so uh, you may find it by sheer accident. You can go to your local yarn stores and ask them if they know if there's any knitting groups. Um, the guild that we have in Bakersfield, we have about 135, 140 members now. And I started that in 2012. But it took me about five years before that to accumulate enough people that would be interested in a guild. Um, and we belong to TKJ, but we also do a lot of public things so that people can find us. We don't knit in each other's homes. We knit in public. Uh, we knit at Panera's. We knit at coffee shops. We use the local library because people just walking by find us and we've gotten a lot of members that way. So. If there's nothing in your area, you can start something. <laughs> That's what I did. And now I have a whole family, huge family of knitting friends. It is very, very heartwarming. It's wonderful for my life. It's wonderful for all of our lives. Okay. This is Frank Jernigan. Frank hey, Frank. And he says, question, it's so great to see you both. How long have you known each other and how did you meet? I'm going to answer the first part. I got into the Master Hand Knitting program, and then, of course, I started reading Arinda's articles, and um, I don't think we had very many YouTube videos at that time, but no, I, didn't. I wanted to meet her so bad. So the very first Knitting uh, Guild uh, TKGA conference, the Knit and Crochet show that I was able to go to was in Portland, and I flew into Portland, and then there's that little train that takes you. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> It's a really cool little train. It takes you from Portland down to the downtown center. It's like a dollar eighty-five, and I got on that, and there was this lady sitting there that she looked like she had to be a knitter, but I didn't see her <laughs> knitting. But she sure looked like a knitter, and and she got off at the same stop I did, and she walked into the same hotel I did, and the next day I found out it was Arinda. So. I thought uh, well, that's how I, but we didn't speak to each other or anything. We didn't, you know, but then I was in the lobby of the hotel the next day sitting and knitting with one of my friends and Arenda was over at the information booth for the Knitting Guild Association. And she saw me and she came over. She says, are you Suzanne? And, was like, <laughs> and then we've kind of hit it off ever since. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been a, a nice working relationship. Very nice. And we always have fun together. Um, in fact, I think we would talk all night long if we were in this. <laughs> okay. Amber Shiwi, I am amazed by Arenda's Four Seasons sweaters, the gauge and evenness. Just wow. Aren't I amazing? <laughs> and she knits those flat, by the way. She doesn't do oh, yeah. it stranded in the ground. She does it flat. This is Margie. And Margie says, Arenda and Suzanne, do you have contact to European associations or do you know if they exist at all? Not really. I know that there is some form of a master's program that was in um, the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but uh, they were charging a lot of money for it because they were paying their reviewers. Um, I mean, a lot of money. Um, but that's the only one that I know of. Okay, so Amber answered Margie. Amber says the closest guild to us in Germany is in the Netherlands. Okay, so basically this yeah. is the thing. Um, this is from uh, the lady from Chile, Margaret. What happens at Master's Day? Well, 
the way it's structured now is um, we pick topics that are of interest to people in the masters. And so at the same time, when you go in, I think there are four sessions during the day. Heather is teaching there well. She can chime in. Um, and there's a group that is focusing on something for level one, a group that's focusing on something for level two, and a group that's focusing on something for level three. And they're going on simultaneously. Um, so four sessions during the day. And all of those uh, sessions have a very complete handout that the instructor has prepared. So even if you're working on level one, you get all of the handouts for the entire day. So it might be a handout on intarsia or buttonholes or gauge. Um, and you can work with the, um, you know, talk to the instructor. We used to do swatch review, but we have not been able to do that at uh, the venue that we're at. We're kind of limited by space and time and personnel. That I remember when I was involved in it, what we would do is we would all speak amongst each other and we would try to pick topics that seemed like what people needed at that time. Yeah, that's, that's what view of the work. Yeah, that's what drives it. And we have a list of uh, what we're trying to do now is to kind of standardize the handouts so that we can do modules and just kind of pick and you know, right. if somebody in a guild in California wanted a master's day, we could organize one there as well, you know, without all of them. Oh, cool. Okay. This is from Sue M. She says, I am op opening a local yarn store next spring. Which course would be better for me to serve my customers? Uh, I think the professional knitting one would, uh, you know, how much do you need to know about the traditions of knitting in Ireland? Um, the professional knitting goes through all of the topics. You are going to be very familiar with gauge by the time you're through. Uh, uh, finishing is emphasized a great deal Um I think that one might be better. Now, if you want to know the where's and why's and how's and the ins and outs, the master's program is better. It just depends also on your personality and, and how much you want to invest in, how much time you have to invest in it. Because the master's program is going to take you a lot more time. Right. Exactly. So if for me, I would say um, you need to take one of them. Yeah. Based upon how much time you have, you know, if you have more time and resources do the master hand knitting program if you're tight on time do the professional knitting course um this one is excuse me margaret in chile question how long did it take each of you to go through the whole master's program you answer uh, i i did each level in a year uh what i did when i did the first level is that when i finished it up I practiced what I had learned, you know, in my own personal projects, because like I said, I like to do a lot of gift knitting and gift knitting. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did that. But I was also knowing that in level two, I was going to have to do a vest and I wanted to design my own vest. So I thought about that, had it planned out. And then I did level two and I did the same thing for level three. I had my sweater completely mapped out in my head before I even started the, the program. So this is and uh, for me. I think level one took me about three months. Yeah. Level two it was six or seven months, and then it took me a year to do level three. And, and the year for level three was because um, my sweater and planning and yeah. about it and swatching for it. And, you know, I probably spent six months doing that. Yeah. Or knitting it. And then you got to write the pattern for it. So, um, okay. This is from Stacy. She says... I'm a continental knitter. I'm not a fast knitter, especially when knit stitch, but purling comes easy, fast, but my tension is way tight when purling. How can I fix tension issues? I love this question. Yeah, this one's for Suzanne. This is so, because <laughs> in all the classes and books, even in, you know, um, um, what's her face's big book? Oh, Principles, oh, Principles of, knitting. of Knitting. It's always says that if you have tension issues, it's because your knits are too, your pearls are too big and your knits are too small. That is if you are a thrower. Yeah. Or an English knitter. 
But if you're a continental knitter, it's the opposite problem. Your pearls get too tight and your knits get too big. And so I'm a continental knitter and I had that problem. My pearls were too tight, my knits were too big. And I would ask people, I would read books, went everywhere. Everybody said, the pearls are too big, you have to tighten your pearls. Well, I tightened my pearls and it got worse and worse and worse. If you're a continental knitter, it's likely that your pearls are too tight and your knits are too big. So you have to work on your knits. I have an excellent video called um, something about tension that's exactly how to form the stitches both throwing and continental so you can see that you end up with your knits and your pearls at the same size and you don't have those gutters. So take a look at that. It's called... And your uh, blog entries from yes. a million years ago are excellent, excellent, excellent. I have a whole series of blog entries of how to even identify a stitch. Oh, I yeah. Tell whether it's the knit or the pearl, all that. So I have a blog. It's Knitting Suzanne. You can go there and look at that, too. Okay, so and we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. So don't post any more questions, okay? We've already been on here one hour and five minutes. I was kind of aiming towards an hour. Um, let's see. And people are giving me nice comments, and I appreciate them all. Thank you. So Evelyn Nitri, how do I sign up for that class? Evelyn, are you asking about the professional knitting course or basics basics or the master hand knitting? Say which one you're interested in. We'll tell you how to sign up. Kimmy Knot, question. Um, I will learn how to maintain any pattern whilst decreasing, whilst decreasing. I know how to do the different decreases, but I cannot maintain the pattern. I'm really frustrated about this stitch course is good. Um, Knitting increases and decreases can disrupt a stitch pattern. So that's when you decide whether you want to have the knitting, the increases and decreases over to the edges of the garment, or do you want to have them within the body of the garment? And it depends on what, what kind of garment you're knitting too. If it's a sweater and they really disrupt the stitch pattern, then you would have them along the edges and then that's where you would be seaming pieces together. Um, if it's knitting in the round, you can still place them on the edges like where there's a faux side seam so that they're not disrupting the pattern in the middle of the fabric. In some cases, it's unavoidable, so you have to kind of think about where you're going to place them that disrupts the stitch pattern as little as necessary. Um, what do you say, have to say about that, Arenda? Oh, I agree. And sometimes it's just impossible, but right. you just want them to not stand out. Right. If I'm doing a stitch pattern that's a cable and something like that, I'll decrease right in underneath the side of the pearls where the cable is. Yeah. Because yeah. it kind of hides it under the cable. Yeah. Um, stranded knitting, you would decrease at the edges. Mosaic knitting, decrease at the edges. Intarsia, you would decrease at the edges. Um, things like that. Lace, again, at the, I'd do it at the edges. Okay. Okay, this is Carol Brasino. She says, Suzanne, I want you to know that your video and questions on the screen are blurry. Is anybody else having a problem with blurry? I need to know so I can fix that. Uh, Courtney says, uh, for the person asking about how to find a knitting group, check your local library. I've met several groups this way. It's a great idea. Renee says, it's very clear on YouTube. Um, Courtney says she doesn't have blurry issues. Evelyn, I'm in the November streaming club. Evelyn, I'll tell you about that. Evelyn lives here close to me, so I can tell her about that. And became blurry about five minutes ago. Hmm, Carol. Heather, I'm excited to be teaching at Master's Day again next year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go just to see you guys. It'd be fun. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. And it's, oh, it's a wonderful meeting. I mean, I don't praise things very much okay. and Francoise I, Francoise says it became blurry about 10 minutes ago I'm sorry to interrupt you oh no problem okay watch review question Fatima to Amber could you guess the name of the guild in the Netherlands okay she can take care of that Yeah, I don't see any more questions. We might be rounding it up here. Everybody give a thumbs up. Don't forget to do thumbs up. Okay, Evelyn, it will start. She was inter What she's interested in is the class uh, for knitting the bottom-up sweater that's going to start in November.
Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. I don't see any more um, questions. And I am so glad that you all joined us. And I'm so thankful, Verenda, for joining oh, us. It was very been fun. fun. And we'll see you all next time. Now, you can access, uh, Renda has YouTube, she has YouTube videos on two different channels. She has a Renda Holiday and then she has TKGA. So you can look at either one of those channels to see her videos. She also has a blog. It's just Arenda Holiday. You can Google Arenda Holiday to see her blog. And she's been doing that for years. You can go back through there and, and she lists a lot of her videos and the projects that the videos apply to in there. And she updates on what's happening with TKGA. And then you know I have my stuff. So you can use any of that stuff. And I think we're both very good references for stuff that you do in the Master Hand Knitting program. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. The, or the professional knitting course. Yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Arenda. Oh, you're welcome. And thank I'll, you. I'll see you for sure in November of 2020. Oh, yes. Yes, that's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm okay. Gonna, we're going to let Arenda go now. And let me see. I just go here. And I hope to see you back here. Be sure to share my video with your friends. You can share this information anywhere that anybody might be interested in the uh, professional knitting course or the master hand knitting course. All you have to do is hit the share link. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it on YouTube, Reddit, Ravelry, any of your knitting groups because people have a lot of questions. This is going to be a gold mine of information for people. So come back and watch me again next time and happy knitting. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.